All right. Time now is 747. The Fed announces the first rate hike in three years, and there are more likely to come as well. Here to explain what all this means for you is Chase Wilsey, the vice president of Wilsey Asset Management. Lots of break down this morning. I was just kind of getting some insight before uh, before we talked to you this morning. Absolutely. Uh, first off, good morning. Thanks good for morning. being here. Interest rates going up. What was it, 0.25% or something? Yeah, it was a quarter rate hike. And very important, okay. that's not what's known as the Fed funds rate. That's not what you're going to get anywhere. That's not what you're going to pay right. anywhere. I, that's just kind of a benchmark for what the Fed looks at. So what we're looking at is the Fed is likely going to continue to increase interest rates. Maybe you'll see half a point increases as well, which that is a little bit concerning to some. What I'm more concerned about is the 10-year Treasury. That's what really moves the, the needle. Run. The, the long run, and that's what really sets the tone for other lending standards. I was just going to ask, should people panic? You know, people I should know not some panic. Are. Yeah, <laughs> don't panic, don't panic. I mean, I go back to, to years, we talked to clients that, that have been around for a long time. They remember, you know, buying houses with mortgage rates that were over 10%. Mm -hmm. The 10 year note was over 15%. Yeah. So we're still very, very low in terms of historical standards. Right now, we're, gosh, around 2, 2.5%. We started the year at 1.6%, so we've mm -hmm. increased quite substantially. I would not be surprised, though, if we see the 10-year note okay. approach or exceed that 3% level by the end of the year. So be optimistic, stay calm. Stay calm, stay calm. <laughs> stay calm. It's just rising interest rates were still low compared to historical standards. What does this mean, though, if you have maybe a savings account? I guess, how does that play out? So savings account, I mean, this is some good news for savers because as that short-term interest rate climbs, you're going to start to see your CDs. You're going to mm -hmm. start to see your savings account, your money market accounts. The interest rate that you're receiving is going to go up. But I tell people, don't get too yeah. excited. At the yep. beginning of March, you were uh -huh. at 0.06% for the savings uh -huh. rate. I generally recommend for your liquidity needs, an uh, uh, online bank like Synchrony Financial. Mm -hmm. They were paying about 0.6%. Okay. But be cautious having too much in savings. Because again, if you're getting 0.6%, let's even say it's 1% yeah. now. But inflation is at, let's say, 5% you're losing 4% on your real oh. return because inflation is eating into that. So cash, be careful having too much of it. It's great for your short-term needs, but don't have too much as an investment. Okay, yeah, because that's what, immediately what I thought, savings account. Um, loans, auto or home loans? Yeah, auto home loans, unfortunately for people looking to buy a car, to buy a home, you're starting to see that, that interest rate creep up quite substantially. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the year, I'm just going to look at a 30-year fixed mortgage. Okay. You were around 3%. That is now exceeded 5% for some soon to be home buyers. So that's going to cause the monthly payment to go up. It's also going to price some people out of the real estate market. I'd be cautious just on, on the home, home real estate market at this time because rising interest rates could have an impact on right. it. You also may want to consider different types of loans. So rather than that 30 year fix, that was the gold standard when interest rates were so low. But you, now it's different. It's different now. You've got to look at your situation. You may want to consider what's known as an ARM, which is an adjustable rate mortgage. That might be more favorable. You have to look at the numbers. It's not as easy right. as it in was. terms of now. In terms of in now. In terms of now. Yes. Uh, investments, would you say that's still pretty much a good idea? I was just talking to you about this a little bit ago. <laughs> investments uh, during inflationary periods is important. We talked about the, the necessity mm -hmm. not to have too much cash, but you have to be careful where you're putting that money. Right. I talk about bonds to begin with. Well, what happens as interest rates rise, Bond prices go down. There's a negative correlation. As I said, I think the 10-year note's going to be going up. Mm -hmm. For every 1% move on that 10-year note, you'd lose about 8 to 9% on the price of that bond. Be very cognizant that you don't have too much bonds in your portfolio. I'm also staying away from what's known as growth stocks. Those are your Amazons, your Teslas. They've done great over the last 10 years. But what happens is you're looking at the future cash flows. That's what makes those companies so right. valuable. As interest rates go up, those future cash flows become less valuable. Their stock prices could take a hit. I'm looking more towards your value type stocks with our food companies, insurance companies, financial companies. Look toward, toward the future. Look That's, towards the I future. That's, I think, the gist, right? Don't look in the past. Yes. We always say past results are no guarantee of future results. Absolutely. Look towards the future and how rising interest rates are going to impact your, your situation. All right, a lot of good information. Chase Wilsey, as always, thank you. A lot to unfold there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Well, so I had